Hey, I'm Patrick, and this is my messy studio. Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video. Uh, last time we had some stuff about uh, actual video equipment, some, you know, uh, makeshift ninja and a, a pogo cam. Uh, we're going to switch things up a bit and go more to art. But before we start that, I'm going to do a little format change. Um, I really don't want this channel to be, you know, half-ass tutorials. Uh, so for the time being, I'm going to switch it more to a video podcast sort of situation. I'm still going to have demos, um, but I'm taking a nod from the knitting community. Yes, the knitting community. And I'm going to structure my videos, at least to start, a little bit differently. Um, that way I set myself to task and I stay on task and produce videos and produce work. Um, that'll help you, that'll help me, and... We're all one big happy art community. Fun, yeah. Okay, so let's start. So, old business first. Um, I'm still working on how I want to uh, film or videotape, or not videotape, uh, video these videos, or make these videos. Uh, recording and how I record and what I use to record um, so I'll keep you up to date on that we have some new things happening in the studio new lighting um, different camera setup teleprompter thing B camera C camera that's in Korea I think it'll be here soon uh, anyway so that's old business new business so I've actually been drawing again, and I'm super psyched about drawing again. Um, for the past, I don't know, how long I've ever, I've been out of grad school, uh, I haven't been drawing nearly as much as I should, and honestly, the stuff I was drawing, it was ink drawing, and that was fine for grad school, but I think I needed to step back, and so I decided to do a semi-large charcoal piece. Um, so, during my undergrad, I did a lot of charcoal, like large-scale things, like 8 foot by 8 foot. I think the, the largest thing I made was a uh, charcoal drawing on canvas that was 12 by 8 feet. And it was done with uh, sort of a wet charcoal method. Uh, in this case, um, I actually... Uh, did charcoal on panel so that's that's pretty interesting um normally what i like about drawing is my actual physical hands on the paper so when i use charcoal i like to use uh reeves bfk which is a printmaking paper it has a nice tooth to it it's cold press uh works well uh, it actually works semi-decent for ink, depending on what you're going for. My ink drawings, normally I like uh, Arches Hot Press. Um, but for this case, or for this drawing that I've started, it's actually on panel. Now, your surface prep on a panel is a little bit different. Uh, if you're drawing on it, or if you're inking it, um, few things a few ways you can handle that I like to use what's called absorbing ground and if you're not familiar it basically makes the panel or whatever you paint the ground on including canvas um, absorb uh, fluids and or charcoal in the same way that paper does uh, it's not quite the same the texture is not quite there but it, it is better than saying just drawing on gesso or drawing on some sort of other prepped white, like a sanded gesso or a titanium white or um, paper applied uh, to the panel. So let's start with the, the drawing. So this is what I'm up to. So I'm gonna put this on my cam. So yeah, let me cat it. Um, so what I'm doing here is 
uh, I'm kind of appropriating images from, from pexels.com and sort of can make my own story from it. Um, shout out to, to whoever did this. I'll put a link in the description below of where the originating image is. Um, but yeah, this is where I'm at. Um, so this is um, Absorbent Crown. I originally made three of these panels. Uh, and they were going to be ink. And if we could go back in time for a second, if I can find that footage, uh, I'll do it. Um, I started making ink drawings, and then I didn't like the way the ink drawing was going. And so I came up with this idea, oh, I'll make a reel for Instagram, and it'll be cool for the studio. And I'll power wash that entire ink drawing off the absorbent ground because it was um, non-absorbent, or I'm sorry, uh, non-permanent so theoretically I should be able to dump water on it and it just run completely off that did not go according to plan it was awful I was like okay set up the camera started spraying it you know uh, with my power washer wasn't coming off started scrubbing it with my power washer wasn't coming off um, so I just kept going and, and nothing so I wound up um, doing something else. So this is the remnants of that. So it's panel all prepped. Um, still thinking about leaving this ghosted, but um, this is absorbent ground, or a, a light coat of gesso, then a light coat of absorbent ground on top of the panel. So um, I'm going to have eventually a video about panels in general and making panels, um, but these panels are constructed of masonite. Um, at select pine, um, they are then essentially glued and uh, brad nailed to the select pine and then sanded down um, because uh, masonite has this really slick surface on the top. Uh, so you need to sort of knock that off before you apply gesso. And the gesso is just gonna, the, uh, the masonite's just gonna grab that gesso and suck it in, suck it in, suck it in, you'll be there forever. So. It's going to take a lot of coats and then when you fill that that's okay you slap the absorbent ground on it um it's made by golden uh let's see if i can't grab oh, way back there um but uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it you should be able to get through utrecht thick flick probably even on amazon um i got them at local you know um it was like a craft store it's currently out of business when they were going out of business i bought like Three tubs of it because I had it. Why not? You know? Uh, but anyways, so back to the panel. So after you uh, gesso the, the masonite, um, saying between coats obviously or else you'll get this sort of painted finish, I find that a really low density roller does the best. So low density roller is made for like cabinets. Like if you're painting cabinets, the, the nap on it is really low. I've also experimented with some, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, uh, an air sprayer. Why is it an air compressor with uh, a sprayer? You have to water down the gesso so much that I think it sort of loses it, its structure. Um, but it does go on really nice. You got to use a lot of it or so many coats. I would go with the, the low nap roller uh, and, and obviously sand uh, and then use that same low nap roller uh, with the absorbent ground. And what you'll get is like, it's not quite paper. It's, uh, it's probably the, the toothiest paper you'd ever touch, but it's going to act a lot more like paper than say just gesso. Um, so uh, that would be a panel. Um, uh, a cheap way of getting a panel is go to like, like closeout stores have really bad like decorated paintings. Like they're, they're not really paintings. They're just like prints on top of wooden like box things. I like those. Let's see. So right here. So this is this is basically what I make. I mean, this is like a hard board, which is actually better than, than masonite, in my opinion. If you can find a uh, hard board, um, typically like wood paneling, 
that you see in like 80s and 90s basements, you know. Um, that wood paneling um, is made out of hardboard. Uh, so it's just a uh, more, comp it's still like masonite. It's a processed board. It's not like Luan. Um, I'd avoid Luan at all costs, uh, at least for the, for this purpose. But back to, to where this was, and I'll do a whole episode on, on pre-manufactured panels, but basically you could buy this on clearance. It was like $5. I think you could get pre-made panels at Michael's and things for about 10 doesn't save you a lot, but anyways, back to, back to my homemade panels. So, uh, I am doing panels and I have been doing panels mostly because paper at the time of display becomes an issue. Now I love paper. I'll put up on the wall with thumbtacks or, or command strips and be like, yep, to the wall. Don't put anything glossy on it. It doesn't need to be framed. It's perfect the way it is because paper is perfect the way it is. Um, but I want these to have like an elevated substance. I want them to come off the wall. And oh, I'll try something later. What I'm thinking about doing is getting some two-part epoxy like they you see those videos on, on Facebook and YouTube and stuff all the time reels where they're making tables. And I'm going to do a pour on top of these drawings and you can put like a quarter inch, you know, thick uh, clear epoxy over top of it and see what happens. Now, charcoal, when it hits water, does, or when it hits liquid, let's call it liquid, does some pretty unpredictable things. So on paper, if you were to, to lay down, you know, this, you know, um, this charcoal piece. If you were to spray it with fixed tip, right, um, what you would have happen is, is the paper would take in the liquid and it would draw in um, that charcoal more. And then you'd lose like these really like sort of thick areas of, of, of charcoal. That velvet texture sort of disappears and you see some more workable areas that I don't necessarily want. Um, but this is different. So the absorbent quality of absorbent ground is less than that of paper. Um, mostly because I know exactly how thick it is and how much is laid in here. So it's only to a point where uh, I basically know what it's going to take as far as how much charcoal it's going to pull in. At least I have a good idea of it. And then, so, I don't know what water will do. See, water and charcoal don't, like, mix unless you really work it. Uh, there, there's something about it, and I think it's how the charcoal is processed, probably through, uh, it's probably not like a solvent, it's probably a petroleum product of some kind for, for the binding, or at least for the process. And that doesn't mix with water. So have mixed like powdered charcoal and compressed charcoal with water, but it takes a lot of working. Um, so I don't know what this is going to happen if I pour the two-part epoxy on it. I just don't know what's, what's going to happen with that. But I'm going to try it. But I'm debating on making all three panels before I try it. That way I could do all pours at the same time. Um, according to the calculator, it's going to take 0.73 gallons of, of epoxy to, to cover this 2x4 surface area. I think we're going to do it. I'm not entirely happy with this drawing. It's still in progress. <sighs> Let's talk about the drawing in general. So, the drawing... Um, charcoal. So I, I love charcoal. My whole grad, undergrad, was, was done in charcoal. My undergrad thesis was done in charcoal. The second I got into grad school, guess what I started doing? I started doing charcoal and I started doing big stuff. And then I felt like 
And they sort of slapped my hand and they were like, why are you using charcoal? And I'm like, because charcoal's cool. Always has been, always will be. And it's actually my favorite thing to teach when I was an adjunct uh, uh, drawing instructor was charcoal and how to use charcoal. Um, in this particular case, I'm using vine and compressed charcoal, a lot of compressed charcoal. Um, when I first started to learn how to use charcoal, I didn't know vine or will willow charcoal ever existed. Um, we were told to buy charcoal my first drawing class, and so I did. I didn't know I was supposed to buy vine charcoal as well. So imagine you needing to get compressed charcoal so light, beyond light. Well, if you're forced to do that and forced to learn how to, to, to work charcoal in that way, well, then you start getting really good at compressed charcoal. But right now I'm sort of a little bit out of practice uh, and I do love charcoal. Um, like if you look at like Robert Longo children and Nick's or even a lot of, a lot of Robert Longo's, that, those are really like precise words. Like I'm not like that. I'm a bit heavy handed and, and more gestural than, than that. Um, not to say that, that I, I don't think, well, I know I could do something like Children of Nyx, um, large scale, you know, I mean, they're just heads of children, um, like emerging from darkness. Um, unlike his other stuff where like people like posing, it's still in charcoal, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's still large scale. I'm not that clean. I mean, I have a messy studio. There's no way that's going to be done. Um, so, oh, which leads me to another thing about not doing it on paper. I don't have any flat surface area in my studio large enough to do that. So that would mean I'd need to make a panel specifically for drawing one at a time or make multiple panels. Um, so I'd have to make a drawing table specifically for paper. So uh, the widest paper I have is 42 inches wide. So it needs to be at least 42 inches wide by let's go 70. That's a pretty huge thing to make and then make two of them make them sturdy enough that I don't uh, get ripples or anything appearance under underneath. And you can't just use like masonite. Masonite will lay a texture on the second you start spreading charcoal over it. Um, so um, in undergrad, I actually just taped everything to the floor uh, and drew on the floor. But I can't do that here. So another reason for panels. Uh, okay, back to charcoal. Charcoal, charcoal, charcoal. Okay, so learn to use compressed charcoal as light as whatever. Uh, and blah, 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 Robert Longo, what was I going to say? Oh, so I follow a guy on Instagram called uh, Joseph uh, Laura Boro? Laura Bra? Laura Bra? I don't know. He's British, but he's always posting from like Paris and Berlin and a few other places. He does these really sort of heavy-handed, like, um, sort of heavy-handed figural things. And he does, and then he puts these, this um, gold leaf inlay. It's really cool. I thought, you know, spray paint and charcoal was nifty keen. Uh, if you want to see some spray, uh, spray paint and charcoal, you can visit my website at patrickdew.com. Anyways. He do, he's doing some some gold inlays um, on top of some sort of gestural but very firm worked hard sort of charcoal drawings juicy things like like I would do where you have really work things it's even yes but his lines are fine but then he'll take like a big stroke like you know um, eraser stroke and 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 pull that out. Uh, who else is doing good charcoal? Um, a guy I went with, uh, to, to undergrad with at Bowling Green. Uh, his name is Jeremy Plunkett. I'll put his, his, uh, website and address below. So when Jeremy went to, to, to grad school, he seemed to be doing exactly what I wanted to do. And that was large scale charcoal drawings, which where I was going to grad school, they were like saying, they are pushing me away from charcoal. He started doing large scale charcoal stuff, the kind of stuff I wanted to do. Of course, he's better at interiors. A lot of those are interiors. 
Um, but he is an amazing artist. Uh, he's far better at oil than me. Um, very different styles. I wouldn't even really compare Jeremy with me. He's an excellent printmaker. Um, but anyways, check out his stuff too. Um, the, his his uh, grad school stuff with, with charcoal uh, was great. Where am I headed with this? I have th two more drawings I want to do. I'm going to finish this up within the next two weeks and then move on to the next. Um, the next will be just another add to the story. It'll be something new. Um, when they're, you know, the triptychs together, uh, you can make your own story out of it. I'll have a story in mind, obviously, but then you'll get to pick one too. And then comes the epoxy. And that's where it, that's where I'm doing next. So I have absolutely no finished objects to share. So as I mentioned before, when I'm taking a nod from the knitting podcast, they have like basically new business or old business, like tying up loose ends. They show what they're wearing. They show what they're working on. I showed you what we're working on. Um, and then sort of squishy mail, but we'll call that studio update instead. Um, not much in the studio. Uh, it's cold and the studio is 58 degrees and that's only because I've had the heater on for two hours before I got in here. Um, I'm hoping it is not too cold uh, to be in here this winter. I insulated my ceiling uh, with some Reflectex, uh, but I think I made a Faraday cage because cell phones, no go in here. But there's an access point right outside the door, and that's still working. Good thing. Okay, what else we got going on in the studio? Uh, new lighting situation. As I mentioned before, new camera situation before. Oh, yeah. If you didn't know, Messy Studio is also my gym. And uh, now a bike shop. Um... So it's sort of a multi-purpose room they need to keep clear and that's why there isn't a big ass drawing uh, on the floor uh, with this two by um four drawing i can i can pick it up and move it where i need it um and the weight rack it's an easel pretty cool huh i know this was all over the place and it was more of a vlog style and i hate vlogs and so we'll, we'll call it a video podcast style how about that video podcast and that's where we're, we're we'll leave it maybe I'll film this again I don't know all right that's it um take care guys uh this was a this was a quick one keep me honest give me questions if you guys want to know more about panels and more about charcoal I will do demos on both please comment below and subscribe um, and other than that, thanks a lot. Uh, see you next time here in the Mesa Studio.